Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Wednesday, June 22nd, and we have lots of updates and lots to talk about. So first of all, welcome to all of our Let's Go family members. You are a remarkable family to be associated with, and I am so grateful for you. And also a big welcome to all of you who are new. I am really glad that you found us, and I hope that you decide to stay and be in our family, our whole huge Let's Go family, together with us. If anyone here has hasn't subscribed yet, would you please subscribe to our channel? It will really help us out and I think it is going to really help you out as well. If when you hit that subscribe button, you hit that little bell next to it, then you will just get a little notification whenever we post a video or when we go live so that you don't miss out on anything and I think um, you will really enjoy it. So first of all, I wanted to start off a little differently than I often do. Yesterday on our Facebook group, and by the way, if you have not joined our Facebook group, get yourself over there. It's just Let's Go Travel Tips. You request to be admitted and my um, sweet husband lets you in. And we have such an amazing community there. People post so many helpful things. They ask questions and lots of people have the answer. And so take a look. But anyway, yesterday, um, I think there used her name is Dan and Tammy Jet. Tammy Jet. It's Dan and Tammy Jet is who it is. Clearly, and they're in our Let's Go family. And I really appreciate they took the time. And I don't know if it was Dan or Tammy, but they wrote a really long post that is amazing. And it is worth it to join our Let's Go group just to be able to read it. It is long, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it did inspire me to um, share a few things with you. So first of all, I appreciate that this is what they talked about, how often we get disappointed with things that in the end really don't matter. But they said the economy is poor, politics are a mess, employers are short-staffed everywhere, not just on cruise lines, and people are tired of much of it, including the COVID measures. If we look at it through that lens, maybe we can temper responses accordingly. She says, or he says, I do not expect a perfect cruise. I don't expect a perfect flight. What I can expect is the is to ex exercise grace and to take a pause when something doesn't necessarily meet my dream expectations. I'm going to travel and pack a lot of patience. And so then they go on to say, um, you know, if the app doesn't work, then they just won't plan to book their reservations that way or they'll... Um, if they can't order their drink, they'll just hop up and go get it themselves. But in the end, they are really going to just shake off the negative and enjoy their cruise. And as I read through that, I really appreciated that post for so many reasons. And one of them is, you know, lately I have been just a little bit weighed down because, um, of really a lot of negative comments, not about me, not about you, but just things are not going as smoothly as a lot of people would hope on the cruise lines right now. And um, so I try to give you that information. I do give you that information so that you can be prepared. And I will continue to do that because you need to know if you're going to get on that crown princess, make sure your toilet flushes right off and some other things like that. But some of the just little things, um, Thank you very much for Dan and Tammy for reminding us to shake it off. We do have the gift to be able to travel right now. And it kind of made me think about where things are. And you know what, y'all? We're not going to go back to where we were before COVID. History has never worked that way. We only move forward and we gain the experience that we collect as we move through experiences so that we can be better. I think that is what it is intended for. And so you might have... Um, you know, my way of looking at it is some things, you know, we might miss, but some things that we never expected to be wonderful or spectacular are going to blow us away, I believe. And along the way, we've learned so many things. I learned truly, as we think in this forum here of travel, I appreciate travel way more than I did before. I felt grateful. I thanked um, God, our loving Father. I thanked Him for the opportunity to travel, but I didn't appreciate the luxury it was that if you had 
had enough money, you could book where you wanted to go and go and have a lovely time. And so that is one thing that I've learned from COVID. Another thing that I have learned is what a luxury it is to visit our family whenever we would like. Um, that taught me a lot about that. So I always appreciate that more. And there are countless things, but those are the th two things I'm telling you today. So in the comments, I would like for all of you to share some of the things that you have learned to appreciate more so that we can all think about these things together. And additionally, I had a video that I put out that I wanted to comment really quick. It was the day that we were in Athens. And I will ask Gordon to link it just after this one so that you can watch it. Because we were up there on the top of a, the Acropolis and I just had to show you all how beautiful it was. And it has occurred to me, and as it did as I stood there that day, that all of those beautiful structures, the Parthenon and the Erechtheon, just everything that is up there on the Acropolis, as well as a lot of things in that whole area, have stood for centuries. They have stood through plagues. They've stood through war. They have stayed, you know, stood there through happy family celebrations. They have been there through everything, and they're still there. And so regardless of some things that aren't meeting expectations, it is worth it to go through that to go expect enjoy those things. And so I just wanted to add that and let you all know that... Um, I think that it's remarkable that we get to go on a cruise. And so if things can um, if things can come together that you can get to go on a cruise when you feel comfortable, I think you should go. And then I just wanted to close on Dan and Tammy said, um, absolutely nothing shy of injury or death should ruin this bucket list trip. And so thank you. We are all going on all of these bucket list trips. Whether we have been somewhere before, there is a reason that we are going where we are going and we should expect to go and be renewed and enjoy every moment. So I just wanted to leave that with you and I'd like to get your take on that. And in the light of sharing some happy news, our Let's Go family member Diane was recently on a cruise um, from Vancouver to Alaska and she was so kind to let us know that when she landed in Vancouver, she didn't have a princess package, a hotel package booked, but she noticed there at baggage claim that the princess rep was standing there with a sign to welcome everyone who did have a hotel package. She went and spoke with him. He was really kind. She made sure about where she was supposed to meet the next morning to board the princess transfer. And I just wanted to say that is wonderful news. So I want all of you to start sharing some good happy news as well. I think it will buoy us all up as well as hearing about the things that are negative. We do have to hear about the things that are negative so that we can all be prepared and know um, what to be prepared for when we go. Um, it's the thing like I told you yesterday, um, from now on, have the name of the hotel that you're staying at with a princess package and your phone and the phone number in case someone's not there. But to me, having someone not there at um, right at the baggage claim, it's not a deal breaker. It doesn't make me want to go home. And so I just wanted to let you know um, about that really happy news. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is what is making all the headlines today. So as you know, Carnival Corporation holds a lot of cruise lines. I think it's nine. And one of those is P&O Cruises. And they have just announced late yesterday that for the cruises that start this Saturday, this Saturday, if you can believe it, June 25th, and the cruises that sail through July 23rd of 2022, they are not going to require testing for people who are fully vaccinated. And so I think that is really great news. Like um, I told you all about yesterday, the CDC announced that they are looking at all of the requirements and trying to decide what they are going to do moving forward about requiring testing and embarkation. But I think it is really amazing that um, P&O is going to do this. Now, you might recall, like I told you all last week, that Viking is also doing the same thing. There are only, I think it's two ships of Viking that is going to require that are going to require testing before embarkation. And both of those are sailing over here in North America. One of them is in the Great Lakes and um, the other one, I can't remember right now. It'll come to me, I think. But at any rate, they, for all of their European cruises, are going to um, not have testing anymore. So it's going to be really fun to hear how things are going. It's You know what? And I think if things were going miserably, we would have already heard about that out of Viking. But anyway, um, so the sailings are going to go on the P&O Iona, and they are going to be sailing there in the UK. You might require... I'm sorry, you might recall that the cruise lines 
on the ceilings from Europe over there have been meeting the requirements set forth by the EU that anyone 18 and older has to either have a booster or their original vaccine has to be a, has to have been done within the last nine months. That is a requirement that we have had um, this whole season, as I would call it, of cruises going over there. Now, you also might remember that with that requirement for um, sailing, a lot of the countries there in the EU, as well as the UK, have not required a negative test to um, fly in if you're vaccinated for a long time. And even in some of the countries, you don't even have to be vaccinated and you can fly in without a COVID test. So I think that this comes on the heels of them having a lot of success with that. I looked at the uh, numbers for COVID cases for a whole bunch of the countries that cruise lines call at, and they have not made a bump in the last month. They, they are doing great. And so I think that's a really important factor. And so I'm really excited to hear what the CDC says here and how things are going. The other thing that I am really interested to hear about with this announcement is what is going to happen with the crew, with the testing that goes on on some of the longer cruises, like back in January, February, when Omicron was a thing, like the Panama Canal cruises would have testing partway through. Some of the longer cruises otherwise would have testing partway through just as a routine. And so that has returned on some cruises and so i am really excited to hear if that's going to go away as well as well as what the requirements are going to be for people who are quarantining like are they going to still require people to quarantine uh, if you test positive and how much testing they're going to require in that so i think that there's a whole lot we are waiting to hear about and I did forget to tell you, with the cruises there that are going to depart on PO, they are requiring everyone who is 16 and older to have a booster or to be have been vaccinated within the last nine months. I think that boosters are going to be the key to getting rid of testing. That's just my opinion as we see more things unfold. It sounds like boosters are going to be the key to getting rid of testing. I would like to know what you all think. So um, let me know. And nobody has mentioned a second booster yet, by the way that's not even on the table with anyone. So um, I have a couple of quick questions before we go into some more updates for anyone. I know some people click out. So I wanted to ask, has anyone that is sailing on the Island Princess June 29th over to go on a Baltic cruise, have any of you received your medallions yet? I've had um, a few Let's Go family members who haven't received theirs yet and are wondering if they are the only ones or if you have started receiving those yet. And remember, two things, just remember, if you're app's not working, don't worry. You can check in like the normal way of checking in when you get to your cruise and it goes really smoothly. Like, don't be letting that get you worried. Enjoy being preparing for your cruise. The other thing is, is if your medallion doesn't come or you leave home before it comes, you can get another one right at embarkation. Don't be worrying about that. And they are still, as far as I know, just shipping the medallions to passengers who live in the United States. As far as I know, they have not started shipping them to Canada or to other countries. And so don't worry about it. Just get it when you get to embarkation. The next thing that I wanted, this is just a public service announcement, is I mentioned the mighty um, cruise ships, uh, that series that they have got on Amazon Prime that is amazing and you should watch if you enjoy um, learning about cruise ships and all these things. But somebody in Canada mentioned that it is not available on Amazon Prime. So someone else said you can watch it on the Discovery Channel there. And then we also had another Let's Go family member say they also watched that series on the Smithsonian Channel. So I just wanted to tell you all that in case it's helpful for you. The next um, thing that I wanted to let you know is our Let's Go family member, Wendy, was able to book a room at the Ramada Inn in Fort Lauderdale and she said that it was much cheaper than a lot of the other hotels that she had been able to find. So if you're looking for somewhere affordable in Fort Lauderdale, take a look at the Ramada Inn. Let's see. Now, another thing here that I want to talk to you about, let's see, um, is... Let's see. Sorry. Now I want to talk to you for just a minute about Princess Izier. And I want you to know I am not beating a dead horse with this. <laughs> I am not going to relive um, what happened to us um, when we were on our last trip because I think you all know about that. But our Let's Go family member, Debbie, asked if I recommend using Princess Easier or not. So it really made me sit down and think about what I would really recommend and what I think I'm going to do going forward. 
and what I'm going to consider. So first of all, there are some really good things about using Princess Easy Air. Very often, I would say, I would say usually, the tickets are cheaper, the plane tickets. So that is a big perk. Another thing is that if you happen to be delayed in your flights and you arrive after your cruise has sailed, Princess will help you get to the next port so that you can embark on your cruise, and that is included. You don't have to pay the travel costs associated with that. So I think that is another really good perk. And then another thing is, is if you are traveling and your flight is canceled, they'll get you another flight. So if you are someone who is not savvy with booking flights on the airline, you might want to consider that. Another really important thing to consider, and I'll talk to it with the cons, is that right now the wait times are so long. And so you just have to be prepared that if you've got a call that you just are going to be on hold forever. So be aware of that, unless you call during their emergency hours. But if your flight is canceled in the middle of the day, you can't wait till the middle of the night to call. So anyway, be aware you're going to have those long wait times. But those are some really good things. And those are the reasons that we booked Princess Easy Air. Um, I would add that the sailing that we just went on was our 14th cruise with Princess. And 13 times we never had a hitch. I'm going to add, though, that we are in a whole new landscape here. So before um, all of this happened, and really, it's just been in the last few months since really we are just feeling more and more the ramifications of COVID with having the employee shortage, and we are having these high, high, out-of-this-world gas prices, that plane tickets are going up so quickly in price, like I was just... I've been looking at some flights for places that we want to go, and it's unbelievable how much the plane tickets are right now. And so those are some new factors at play here. And the way that I think that it is impacting Princess Easy Air is, like I had mentioned, when we left home from our home here and traveled to Rome, now as we look back at our um, travel summary, our tickets were not ticketed yet to return home. So be aware that we had our seats scheduled, Everything was good. It was showing up in our Delta app. Everything was great. But they were not ticketed yet. So, of course, they were canceled by the airline because you have a window that you have to be ticketed by. And if you're not, it's it's not done. And so instead of picking up those same flights again, they just picked up cheaper flights. So be aware and learn what we learned that you make sure before you go that your return flights are ticketed. And don't just click on the um, little thing. What does it say there on the Princess website? Don't just click on it and ticket it because as our Let's Go family member Steve learned, that they consider a change and they're going to bill you for it. So if you want to make sure they're ticketed, call Princess Easy Air. Wait on their long wait times and make sure that that is done. That is something that I learned from this. Another thing is... Um, that when you book with the Princess Easy Air, you're not in control of your flights. So as a general rule, the airlines will not talk to you about your flights. They'll say you've got to talk to Princess because that's who booked them. And so even if you are able to get through on your, like to Delta, American, Southwest, whoever it is that you are booked with, they usually won't talk to you about it. They'll make you talk to Princess about it. And then that puts you back to those long wait times. And so, and I don't know if before um, all of this happened, I don't think that they had quite as many wait time uh, quite as long of wait times because number one they weren't ticketing so close so they weren't having the kind of problems that we have as well as I think that they're short on employees. I don't know, but I like to think that's why their wait times are so long. And so I really should look and see if Princess is taking applications. That would probably help us know if they think they're short. But anyway, just be aware of all of the things that you have to think about when you're deciding if you're going to use Princess Easier. I also want to say that I really do think that hopefully in the long run, things will get better. We're not going to have so many flights canceled because of um, pilot shortages, crew shortages. I It sounds like the airlines are trying to work that out, but it's going to take a while for that to get us back to having enough pilots and crew always that they won't have to cancel flights for that. There is always the risk of having your flight canceled for mechanical problems or weather. That's just not going to go away, but so much of the trouble that we are having in 
seeing so many flights canceled all the time. Hopefully as time moves on, that's going to get better. And so that's another thing to consider as well. So that's kind of, if any of you have any other considerations, things that you think we should all think about when we are booking with Princess Easier, will you please put that in the comments below? And so those of you who are trying to decide what to do, just kind of weigh it out and decide how things work for you and um, kind of what your tolerance level is on different things. That it's kind of like there's not a right or wrong answer. It, it just is whatever you're most comfortable with. So the next thing I wanted to let you know is we have an update from the Discovery Princess and um, she, our Let's Go family member Michelle, um, has been so kind to let us know that um, you're going to have to go to customer service and ask a few times. She says they have lots of new employees who are just learning how to do their job, so keep your patience. And um, she said that they are having a hard time with drinks being charged to them that are not theirs. And she was talking to someone and they said that like when they, you know, they have those little handheld things that they bring up if you order a drink. And she said that it brings up like and I, it does make perfect sense. Lots of people like right in the radius there. And sometimes they'll click on the wrong person. They'll bring you the drink, um, hopefully. <laughs> but um, they will, like if you're at the pool, you have a greater chance, I think, of getting it if they look at you when you give them the order or the dining room. But anyway, sometimes they'll click on the wrong person and charge the drink to that person instead of to you. And so that means sometimes you maybe get somebody else's charges as well. And so if you are somewhere and you didn't order that, you know, a drink and you get charged for one, it might take a couple of times going to customer service to get that worked out. To me, that's not a deal breaker. It's just one of those things to be prepared and know that you're going to have to do. She said that about 10% of the guests are wearing masks and all of the crew. And she says they see them constantly cleaning the public area, so they feel great with that. And then here is a word of warning. They are on a higher deck, Riviera 14, and there is a great deal of motion. She was a little bit seasick the first day, which has never happened in 15 cruises. So be aware that if you are sensitive to motion, that even on those really big ships, they will still rock and roll some with the wind. And so be, um, she says, even if seas are relatively calm. And so by the second night, she was used to it and doing great. So just be aware of that. Make sure that wherever you book or if you accept an upgrade, make sure that you know what goes with that. If you're someone, just so you know, that seasickness really does bother you, book low and in the middle of the ship. You're going to get a lot more movement in the back. I'm sorry, in the front than you will in the back. So you might want to book low. Um, we have really enjoyed being low and and aft when we have been on really rough seas. So just kind of keep this thing in mind. And I think mid-aft is probably um, perfect or as far forward and aft as you can be um, so that um, to minimize some of that rolling. And so... Just wanted to put that out there. And Michelle, thank you very much for your update. We also heard from the Holland America Rotterdam. Andrea and her husband are on that sailing up to Norway out of Amsterdam. And she said they are having the best time ever. She said the ship is spectacular. She says it is beautiful. They've been going to the shows. She said the show called Humanity, like don't miss it. Just don't miss it. So I've written that on my list to see as well, and I hope it's on our ship. I haven't had taken the time to look through the schedule of events on the app to see if it's there. But she was so kind. She also sent some more um, of the daily programs as well as the disembarkation instructions. So I'll remind my Gordon to get those up on our website. That's let's go travel tips at gmail.com. So it's probably a good time to remind you all if you're on a sailing, uh, we would love copies of your princess patter, copies of um you know, whatever the schedule of events is for whatever cruise line you are on, we just put them up on our website and it makes it so people can go and browse and look for anything they're curious to find out. It's really fun. We've got some from a long time ago on the Princess Patters as well as very recent ones. And so thank you all who share those. We really appreciate it. And you can just snap a picture with um, a picture of it if you want to and me email it to us that way. That works just great. So thank you very much. And once again, thanks, Michelle. The next 
next thing um, that I wanted to talk about is we know that the UK is going to have a train strike. Um, one of our Let's Go family members um, was so kind. One commented and that live in the UK. Um, one commented and one has sent me an email saying, yes, they do expect to have a train strike on um, Thursday and Saturday and that they expect the travel days around that to be disrupted. So if you were planning to use the train, figure out something else to be to be ready with. And so some of you were so kind to send suggestions and I really do appreciate it. So um, first of all, um, one of them here I think is so helpful and I made this note for when we go again. They prearranged with a minivan style company with a single driver. He um, picked them up and was taking them out um, on the way to Southampton arranged for them to be able to see Stonehenge. So how cool is that? So they didn't just go straight to Stone, um, Southampton. They got to see Stonehenge on the way. Then after the cruise, he picked them up and took them to Windsor to see a changing of the guard and have some lunch. And then he picked them up and took them back to the airport um, for them to go home. And the name of the company is London Minivan Transfer Company. So London Minivan Transfer Company, write that down. I think that sounds amazing. That's a lovely way to do it. If you can get a place like that that will pick you up and show you some other things on your way to where it is you're going. Another really helpful note is a Let's Go family member said that they are also booked on that island princess to Iceland and Greenland in August. And so they um, also booked their flights to fly in a day early and they are going to stay in Southampton the night before the cruise. So they are going to take the National Express bus to get there. She said that the bus station is right there at the airport. It's easy peasy. They have done it lots of times. And so that is really helpful to know too, the National Express bus, because with a train strike, that'll still get you where you're going just in another way. So thank you very much to Gail for letting us know about that. The last one that we have got, I think is just a really good way to kind of think of um, what you're going to do while you're there. One of our Let's Go family members said that there is like four people in their traveling group and they're going to um, sail out of Southampton, but they want to stay in um, Salisbury for two nights before their cruise. And so they priced a car and they can get a car to take them from Salisbury out to Southampton for 170 pounds. And she said that it's really great. She said if they were to take the train, it would be um, 40 to 45 pounds each and they would have to change trains three times in order to get there. And so with the pricing there, it is just worth it to do the 170 pounds and be taken right where you're going to go. And so kind of think, think about things, price things out that way um, based on where you're going to go and how many of you there are so, and keep all of that in mind. So I really appreciate that, Shelly. Thank you so very much. The last thing I want to talk about, and I put it last in case um, any of you are done, <laughs> but um, I keep on getting more questions from people about um, Rome and getting um, how to get into the city from the airport. So I'm just going to zip through it really quick because we've got a lots of lots of new Let's Go family members here, and you maybe missed my videos about that. I do have a video, and I'll make sure that we link it below, all about what we did on our trip. And um, I did it before we went, and I went through all of the excursions, all of that kind of information that I think you will find very helpful. Be aware that when you fly into Rome, you can either take the Leonardo Express, which is 15 euro a person, very easy to do. And I pointed out the kiosks in our video on um, that we just put up on this last Sunday. I'll link that below as well. That you just go up, you buy a ticket, and you go get on it. It's very simple. It's quick into the city. It's it, They call it the Express because it doesn't stop anywhere between the airport and Termini. It's very easy. Termini is very central there to, in Rome. Very great way to do it. Um, going from, um, you can also get a taxi to take you in and that is 40 euro it's a flat rate and when you do that it doesn't matter how many people are in your car and I mentioned yesterday that if there's several of you and you've got more luggage they have minivans in the taxi queue and they give you one of those same price so be aware of that if you are going want to go from Rome out to the port you have a couple of options you can take the train which Mark has said that they have done a million times he's ex inspired me to maybe try it next time right from Termini right out to Civitavecchia. You literally get out there and then you can get a taxi or a bus that will take you to your cruise ship. 
or you can take a taxi and it will take you from there to the cruise port. It's a flat rate, 125 pounds, you can do that. Or you can have the transfer that Princess does that runs from the Rome airport out to the port. And this year that is $79. And so those are some options. If you're staying in Rome and you want to do that transfer, just get yourself back to the airport. You can go back with a taxi or you can go back with um, the train. They run the trains from Termini to the airport very frequently. And you can take a regular train that will make stops along the way. Or you can take the Leonardo Express that doesn't make stops along the way. And um, so those are your options of getting out to the port. I hope that really helps. Um, and I hope that, um, Joseph, I hope I get to see you on the Lido someday as well. He put that in the comment, and I really appreciate it. I actually hope I get to see all of you over the course of time on the Lido someday. I just really, um, I do love you all, and I'm really grateful that I've been given this chance to get to know you all and have the pleasure of associating with you. So if any of you have any questions about anything I talked about today, please do put those in the comments. Answer the questions, the things that we talked about, as I know that helps all of us and we really enjoy it. And I wanted to add one other thing today. I meant to do it earlier, but it's come to my mind now. I want you to know that one of, um, as I talked about um, some of the things that I learned during, during COVID and what I maybe missed was um, getting to see people quite so much. And I really want you to know that I so value my family and my friendships. And here um, on YouTube, we have our Let's Go family. And so it doesn't matter how big your family is. Otherwise, you're like biological family. But we have um, and a family here. So, so if you need family, you are welcome here and we're a family together. So I just wanted you to remember that we have all got each other here. And so if you appreciate these updates, would you please give this one a thumbs up because that helps YouTube know we're here. And I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.